Hey, good evening. It's uh, February 28th, Wednesday, and welcome to Everyday Talks 24-7. Normally, I'd be saying this is the last day of February, but we've got one more to go, February 29th. So I'm trying to do something unusual tomorrow because it's uh, an unusual day. I want to look again. Last night we talked about this kind of melodramatic in our minds response when Paul says, I want you to live a life worthy of the calling you've received. Because we're thinking about big, glorious things. But rather, Paul is telling us something we might consider mundane, but in reality, it really is glorious and big. So he says, I want you to live a life worthy of the calling you've received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. That's what God is calling us to. And God thinks it's important. This is the first thing that he says after saying living a life worthy of the calling you've received. Are you going to be humble and gentle? See, the Bible makes a big deal about this. And Paul knows that. In, in Romans 15, 4, we read this. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we may have hope. There's our theme again of the hope that Paul is writing for the purpose that we have. And so Paul is referencing something particular here. He's drawing on the wealth of knowledge of the scriptures, and he's bringing that to bear. It's not some new idea. He's got a rich reason, rich heritage for this in the My wife's Ruth's book, Get Wisdom, which I talk about a lot, and, you know, this is a phenomenal book. But her definition of gentleness is this. Gentleness is using only the force or, using only the strength or force that is appropriate. Using only the force or strength that is appropriate. It means I don't have to lose it. I don't have to go off on someone to make a point, but rather, maybe I can, through gentleness, bring about something beautiful and good, and therefore demonstrate the worthiness of my calling by being gentle. So, Paul references, he says, you know, these things written in the past were for us to teach us what we need to have encouragement and hope. So, in Proverbs, we see this about gentleness. I'm going to read chapter 15, verses 1 and 4. 15, 1 and 4. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. But then notice verse 4, and these first four verses in 15 have to do with gentleness and the way we speak. So, verse 4 says, The tongue that brings healing is a tree of life, but a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. The tongue that brings healing is a tree of life. A gentle answer turns away wrath. A harsh answer stirs up anger. Deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. See, if we're not speaking the truth in love, we're in a sense being deceitful. We're crushing the spirit of the person we're talking to. If I'm harsh, I'm going to stir up anger. That's not going to lead to anything what Paul is talking about here in Ephesians, about bearing with one another in love and being completely humble and gentle. No. That's talking about me living the life according to my way of calling, making myself important, not making the Scripture important, not making the Spirit of God important, not making what I've been saved to do important. If I continue to live for myself, then I'm not living for what I was saved for. I was living for what I was saved from. God is trying to keep us from doing what we want to do. That's the problem. But to replace it with this calling that we've been given, that we can do things immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. So we see here that Paul is on very solid ground where he's encouraging us about gentleness. Notice the power of gentleness. Now you notice in the thumbnail tonight, there's this mama tiger carrying her little cub to safety. 
Is there any question there about this mother having power? No. But she's using the gentleness, the force that is appropriate to get the job done. So she's carrying this little guy in her mouth. She could just easily end his life. But she's carrying him carefully. There's no question about the mom being weak. She's just using the force that is necessary to get the job done. She's being gentle with the little cub. That's what we're being encouraged to do here. Your gentle answer turns away wrath. It's a tongue that brings healing. It's a tree of life. So think with me about this for a moment. Someone does something that you think is really not very wise. So you come across, you know what? There's a bunch of other ways you could have done that. That wasn't helpful. That's not helpful to me. You need to stop that right now, or you need to stop this behavior, because I'm not going to be very happy with you if you don't. Or words to that effect. Or you could say something along these lines. Wow. I get it that you're in a tough situation. You know, I understand why, why you felt like you had to say that. I want to work in such a way so that you're comfortable talking to me. I get that you're frustrated. I get that things have been hard. I want to work with you on this. Let's, let's work together how we can see how we can make this better. Help me to help you. If there's something I'm doing is not really helpful right now. Come on. I, I just want to work with you on this one. You know, and, and together we can take care of this. See the difference there? Both address the problem, but one did it in such a way where it was harsh and it stirs up anger. It crushes the spirit. But the other way, it's a gentle answer. It brings healing. It's the tree of life. That is living in a manner that is worthy of the calling of the being given in Christ. See how powerful gentleness is. Let's work on this. Think about this. Instead of trying to be right or trying to put somebody down, let's focus on being gentle. Just like that mama tiger being gentle with her little cub. Think about that. Really important things for us to think about. So you see what Paul's saying, living a life worthy of your calling. Being gentle is exactly what he's talking about. But thanks so much for being here. Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. You have a great evening. Good night. Thank you for watching. May God richly bless you as you seek to live for His glory.